set up for the finished machine on that and uh, <laughs> close to the final cuts this needs to come down about 9.5 millimeters to suit my production cutter and this won't fit in here yet I'm gonna have to side cut this this measures about 6.5 millimeters in width so I've cut a six mil keyway so I'm gonna side cut that plus a little bit of clearance in one go now it's a bit hard to see, but you can sort of see that I'm, I'm using an end mill for cutting these slots. And uh, a number of years ago I was at a machine shop, some guys were doing some, some work for me at work. And they cut all the keyways with an end mill rather than slot drills. And I asked the question why, and they said because it doesn't tend to drag the chips around, which you often get with the end mills, um, slot drills, sorry. And they actually take little nicks out as they drag that chip around. And they said also that it tends to maintain the size a lot better. Um, with the slot drills, when you poke them down and start cutting a seal, always they'll kick off the one side for some reason, run down, so you'll end up with this little funny little elongated end on them. The end mills don't do that. And uh, I must admit, I found it true, spot on. I don't get the little chips coming around and snatching all the time. And if I'm doing a blind key and cutting it, I don't end up with that funny little wander off the one side like I do with a slot drill. So. The end mills work well, so we're getting close to depth now. shot back together once I get this slab all squared up. Mm -hmm. Right, so a little bit more to go on depth, but let's do some solid cutting. Just to that, so, the chips out of the way. So it's just a tad over 9.6.5, so I'll go with about 6.6-ish, give it a 0.1 mil clearance. We'll see how that feels when we get it in there. Yeah. Point four, point four. Let's go point two five either side. We'll see how that feels. So a bit zero off. Yeah. Point two on the dip, I reckon. 
So, save my battery, I might flick it off at the moment and uh, we'll come back and we've got that side cut and depth complete. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Right, we're back from the school run. I think I'll pick the kids up from school. So I'll get this parted off now. So you can see we've come down to depth. It ended up being about 9.8 millimetres deep. We side cut it so it's come up as a, a nice fit for the uh, the brooch inside. And I've checked that on my uh, pulley to make sure that I get it, this engaged in before it starts cutting, and it does that quite nicely. So we'll part this off the length, and then we'll just give it a bit of facing, and uh, we're ready to use it. See how we go with this in a minute cut with this anyway. This will be interesting. Um, So I guess this has taken me a bit more machining time. Probably about 20, 25 minutes. And um, yeah, got a nice broaching bush now. So I'm happy with that. Right, we'll set it up in the broaching press and uh, We'll um, put a keyway in. Well, just quickly before I start off, this is my little, well, I converted this uh, arbor press into a bit of a broaching press. Um, I'll use a ratchet with a three quarter drive. You can see it's covered in mud because it was the ratcheting tool I used on my auger for sinking the cores down into my shed and also on the bell mouthing tool, so I've got to clean that up. But uh, it's copped a bit of a hiding. But sits in there just into a square that uh, I've machined into this adapter. Um, what I've done inside here where the take up adjustments are to put a bit of tension onto this, it just had metal shim in there. Um, I've taken those out and put Daryl and buttons inside there so I can tension those up and it becomes a break for the um, Arbor Square coming down. So it, it works really well. This is just a handle I picked up from uh, from the scrapos. Just modified that to fit, so it's worked out a really nice broaching press. So it's got the the broaching press action. So you can just crunch it down as you go. The way it was set up as an arbor press, you had to sort of put packing underneath the part to get it into a position where. Drop that down. You had to put packing underneath the part to get the handle at the right position so that you could broach with it. It was a, it was a real pain, so 
putting the ratchet on here has worked out really, really well. So we'll, uh, we'll slot this keyway through. I've got to be careful on the depth because I don't want to cut out into where the pulley bases are, the, the root bone where the pulley is. So I'm going to be able to cut this just with the handle, I think. We'll see how we go. And one thing with keyways when you're broaching, you've got to be careful because often they'll kick off one way or the other and, and cut with a taper. So I find if I back it off a little bit, just check it. Give it a little bit more. Back it off, check it. Make sure it's going through square, which it is. Make sure you pick it up. Don't let it drop on the floor when you've punched it through. So, let's have a little look at that. So that's cut really nicely. Really nicely indeed, so we'll pop some shims in behind that and we'll get a little bit deeper. Oh, I'm finding it really hard to find anything at the moment, so I've got it tucked away in cupboards all over the place. And my cupboards, the wrong wheels, I've got to keep moving around. Keep it away the bore holes, the core holes. Juice up. I reckon that will just about be on the money. So that's cut a really nice true keyway into that. I'm really happy with that. So 20, 25 minutes of work and you've got yourself a nice little broaching bush that matches your size. So it's worth it. I've cut it at 90 degrees to this. I didn't want to do it at 180 where it's going to be uh, not pulling up. Well, it's going to be pulling offset on the shaft if I do that. So I'll put a, uh, a grub screw in here and it'll lock on nicely onto the shaft. So anyway, we'll leave it at that. And then it'll be beautiful. All right, I thought I'd mount this motor up just to see how it was looking. And it's not looking too bad. A couple of modifications I'm going to have to make to this base plate here. One is I want to get the motor up a little bit further. So I get a little bit more of engagement of the, the pulley onto the shaft. So I'm going to slot those holes out a little bit. I've made up some, some thicker washers. So to get that up further, I'm going to cut a little flat across the tops of the top ones there. The other thing that's a bit of an issue, you can see here that one of the pivot points is going to fail. So I need to cut that back a little bit shorter as well. So I'll take the motor off, get a little air burr out, and we'll, we'll grind those slots a bit longer. We'll cut that, uh, that pivot back and then put it back on again. If I can get another 5mm out of that, I'll be happy. That's another 5mm of engagement back. On the sort of set up inside there onto the shaft, so we'll, uh, we'll go ahead with that. Other than that, I think it's gonna it's gonna work out all right. It's uh, looking quite good. I'll get the wiring all, all tidied up, make that look a lot better. So I'll have my bandsaw back. All right, so we've got this uh, this mounted up. We've got uh, good engagement. <coughs> Of the pulley, full keyway. We've lined that up across there. Got that on. We've got good clearance now under the pulley to the plastic guard, so no issues there. So my way of thinking, we're we're getting very close to it now. Very hard to do this single-handedly, but let's see how we go. how that's going to run 
and that looks pretty square and neat. I won't run it just yet because I haven't got any oil in the, in the gearbox, so I've got to deal with that. And I've got to get this wired in properly and the limit switch back in. So hopefully very soon I'll have my bandsaw back. But uh, yeah, made some good progress today. It's a bit of a pity we had to do a modification to, to the base plate, but it's, uh, it's worked out quite well. You can see the washers that I sort of ground a bit of a flat on to get them up a little bit higher. A bit more stroke out of it. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's looking good. All right, we're, uh, we're just about done. We've got the, um, the motors all wired in. Directions right. We've done a little test. Um, where I have this keyway, which is open, uh, I've just put a cable tie on it just to hold that keyway in. I guess in hindsight, what I could have done or would have done is I would have made this diameter here a lot bigger. Still cut all the way through, so I didn't have to try and slot a, um, a blind key, but I would have had a lot more meat there for that to drive on. So I'll just have to see that goes over time. I'm not expecting it to be an issue, but uh, it's just something I'll be aware of anyway. But uh, I'll get all this boxed up and uh, I'll get the rest of the cabling all um, tied away, and that's it. We're done. Hopefully, we'll go for another another ten years. I am going to give this a birthday though. It's, uh, it's uh, it needs all the bearings replaced. It's it's getting a bit rattly and loose, so it, it needs a good going over. So um, once I get all these strongbacks finished off and all the steel work cut off for this um, slab lift, I'll strip it right down and go with it. Um, gearbox has been filled up with a, a hotloid uh, high pressure gear oil, so I've. I've Put that in there, um, top that up so that should be as good as gold. Alrighty, so uh, we'll get the whole show boxed up and finished. And we'll Alrighty, that's it, uh, that's it running. Like I said, I've got to give the rest of it a bit of a birthday and tidy it up, but there's a little bit of a lump on the, um, on the pulley belt where uh, it was slipping, but it'll get out. If it doesn't, I'll, I'll get another one. Um, that's the oil that I use in the gearbox. It's a Penrite um, Hotwood ADW9. It's the same gearbox I use in the uh, or the gearbox I use in the gearbox in my life. So I found the good stuff. Well, we'll see how that repair goes. If there's any changes, we'll, uh, we'll post it up and uh, hopefully another 10 years out of it. All right, we're done.